Hello there. Welcome to 4.1, which is all about divisibility. Um, at this point, you've taken the test for Chapter 3, hopefully, or you're doing that this week. Um, and we're moving forward on to the next thing. So when we talk about divisibility, we should start with the idea of number theory. Um, it's properties of numbers, basically. It um, is fairly old from the 1600s through uh, Pierre Fermat. Um, when we talk about number theory, we're talking about factors and multiples and divisibility and prime and greatest common factor and least common multiple, all kinds of things like that. That's all the stuff that's going to be here in chapter four. In 4.1, we're talking divisibility. So when we're talking about things like divisibility, we're talking about how we know numbers are divisible by something. Um, we're talking about multiples. We're talking about factors. We're talking about... Um, how numbers are composed, basically, whether things are prime or composite, um, how you know things are multiples of each other. We're also talking about greatest common factors and um, least common multiples. So that's, we're not quite there yet. We need to define divisibility in some things first, but that is what happens as we move forward in this chapter. Um, Kids have to be able to use in middle school factors, multiples, primes, prime factorization, um, and the things they know about how numbers are structured to actually solve problems. And that, you know, we do this more than we know. We use multiples to help us. We just don't think about it all the time. So when we're talking about this, once again, we're talking about um, pretty much whole numbers, so the zero and the natural numbers here when we're talking about um, sorry, prime and composite and divisibility and that kind of stuff. We're not really talking about fractions yet. We'll get there. Or decimals. Um, this is not the section we're in quite yet, but we'll get there. So to define divisibility, when we're talking about divisibility, we're talking about things are with a remainder of zero. A number A, little a, is divisible by B if A divided by B or A over B has a remainder of zero. 12 is divisible by three, we know, because 12 divided by three is four. There's nothing left over. It works out evenly, right? So that is the definition of divisibility. Another way to think about this and another way it's written is a number B divides A. We write it as B um, with the long bar here, A, if and only if there's a whole number such Q such that A is B times Q. And all that really says is that, you know, 3 divides 12. If we know there's some number Q where we multiply it by 3 and we get 12, there is a number. It's 4, right? So 3 times 4 is 12. So this is true. B divided by A, B divides A is the same as writing A divided by b has a remainder of zero when something is not divisible somehow my little uh my little lines are sort of off kilter here this should be here if something is not divisible we'd write a line through this um divisibility line so for example i could say five does not divide into 12 and that's what that would look like so not divisible is written the way we write not a lot of things with a line through it if B is divides A, okay, so remember we're thinking about something like 3 into 12, then B is a factor of A, just like 3 here is a factor of 12. And A is a multiple of B. So if I count by 3s, 3, 6, 9, 12, those are multiples, right? Three, 12 is a multiple of 3. If A divided by B is a whole number, then B divides A. So if I did 12 divided by 3 as a fraction, I get a whole number that's a 4. Then I know for sure that B can divide A that 3 divides 12. It seems like a crazy way to do that, but truth. So there's some theorems in here, some rules, right? For any whole numbers A and D, if D divides A and N is any whole number, then D also divides N times A. So wait, take that apart. We know that 3 divides 12, right? For sure. 
If I multiply 12 by a whole number, say I multiply it by 3. So let's divide 3. Uh, we'll pick something actually. Actually, Let's not pick 3 because that's tricky here. Let's pick 4. So if I multiply 12 by some whole number, four is a whole number, 3 still will divide into that result. So does 3 divide into 4 times 12 is 48? Well, yeah. 3 goes into 4 once. One left over, three goes into 18 six times. So three times 16 is 48. If D is a factor of A, if it's divisible, A is divisible by D, so three is divisible by 12, then it's also a factor of any multiple of A, okay? Just like it's also a factor of 48. If A and D are whole numbers, let's see if this is true. If 5 divide does not divide into A, and 5 does not divide into D, then do we know for sure that A, 5 does not divide into A plus D? Okay, so here's the thing. Let's make an example. So let's say A is 6 and D is 7. Let's pick two numbers. Well, 5 doesn't divide into 6, right? That's not good. 5 doesn't divide into 7, so we know that part's true. Let's see what happens when we add them. Does 5 divide into 6 plus 7 is 13? Well, no. But can you think of an example where it would work? Well, let's try something else. And pause for a second. See if you can find a case. Because really, when we're trying to prove something true or not true, we need an example where it's broken. If we can find the bro broken example, then this is not true at all, right? So let's say, let's say A is 14. Does 5 divide into 14? Well, no. And then let's say it also, let's say D is 21. Does 5 divide into 21? No. Then let's see, does 5 divide into, what's 14 plus 21? 14 and 21 is 35. Well, yeah, it does. So just because a number doesn't divide into evenly into two different numbers, it does not automatically mean that it can't be a factor of their sum. Okay, that's what that means. So there's some rules that go with this. All right, so let's take them apart. If D divides into A and D divides into B, then it also divides into their sum. It's different than what we just said here. We were checking nots, right? But what we're saying is if it works for both numbers to start with, it's gonna work for both numbers together. So let's say, for example, I know five divides into 10, and I also know five divides into 15. Well, their sum, five, 10 plus 15 is 25. Five is also gonna divide into 25. Okay, look at the second one. If D divides into A, so let's use our same example, five divides into 10, and it doesn't divide into B, five doesn't divide into 14, it is not gonna divide into their sum because there's no way that their total can be divisible by that number, right, if they're both not. So five is not gonna divide into 24, true. So let's read the third one. If D is divides into A and into B, and A is greater than B, then D will also divide into their difference. Okay, so let's try that one. Let's see what that says down here. Let's scroll down the page a little bit. So for C, D divides into A and A has to be bigger than B. So let's make them switch. So 15 divides in, oops, sorry, I should have written five. Five divides into 15, that's true. And five divides into 10, right? Well, then five would also divide into their difference. 15 minus 10 is five, that's true, okay? Look at D. It's the same idea, just with B not working. So let's say five divides into 15, we know that one's true. And five does not divide into nine, right? 
then five is not going to divide into their difference. Five is not going to divide into 15 minus nine is six. That's not going to work. Okay. It's also not going to work in the reverse. So if one of these divisions isn't going to work, it's not going to work at all. So E says, if D doesn't divide into A, so let's use our 14, but it does divide into B, so let's use 10. Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's not going to divide into their difference. It's not going to work, okay? Do you see, so take a second and make sure you can make sense of this just because it's part of what we're doing here, okay? All right, so what we can do here is this theorem that if D divides into A and D divides into B, then D also divides into their sum, okay? If A is a multiple of D and B is a multiple of D, then A plus B is also a multiple of D. That's what that means, okay? So basically, like, think about it this way. Three divides into 12. Three divides into 30. So three is gonna divide into 42. 12, 30, and 42 are all multiples of three, okay? That's gotta work. If D divides into A and not into B, then it's not gonna uh, go into their sum. Think about it this way. Three divides into 12, but three doesn't divide into 14. 3 is not, or 14 is not a multiple of 3. So when I'm counting on, I'm adding them together, dividing 3 into 26, I messed up my multiples, right? Now I'm off. So it's not going to continue to work because neither of those two are going to work. If one of the pieces I'm adding together is not a multiple, it's going to make it so the sum can't be a multiple. All right, so... The crux of what's in this unit is divisibility tests, and this you really have to be able to do. Okay. And somehow I had lost a page of all this. Where did it go? I don't know. I was writing on it, and then I disappeared it. Hmm. Sorry. I'm going to take two seconds here and go into my folder and see if I disappeared it in the way I think I did. I think I clipped it together into a section that I didn't mean to. I just have to find that section for a second. Oh my good gravy. Sorry guys. Where did it go? Oh, I bet it's right there. Yep, I found it. Sorry. Okay. I knew I was light on pages. So divisibility rules. Some of these you know, some of these you won't. Okay, so the ones that are new for you work on. All right, so if I want to test to see if something's divisible by two, we know that's the case if something is even. So we look at the last digit. If a number ends in 24680, then the number is divisible by 2. We have to look at whether it's even. Okay. To test if something's divisible by 3, we want the sum of the digits of the number to be divisible by 3. So for example, if I want to know if 621 is divisible by 3, I would add 6 plus 2 plus one, I'm gonna get nine. I know nine is divisible by three. Therefore, 621 is divisible by three. For divisibility by four, you look at the last two digits of a number. So let's say I have 10,456. I don't care about anything here except these last two digits. If those two digits are divisible by four, the whole thing is, okay? So is 56 divisible by four? Well, let's see. Does four go into 56? Four goes into five once, one left over, four goes into 16 four times. Yes, so check, that's divisible. I don't care about anything but the last two numbers. To test divisibility by five, the number has to end in zero or five. So like an example would be 525 is divisible by five. All right. To be divisible by six, there's no real test. What you have to have is a number that is divisible by both two and three. 
So for our example we had uh, before, we had 621. Is 621 going to be divisible by 6? No, because while it was divisible by 3, that was good. It's not even, so that one's not going to work. But let's try 612. Well, if I had done 612, 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3, and it's even, so that one's going to work. Sadly, there is no divisibility test for 7. You just have to actually do the division. Sorry. Um, for 8, we look at the last three digits of the number, nothing else. So let's say I have 1,216. In this number, I care about these three digits, okay? I look at, is 8 going to divide into 216? Well, let's see. 8 doesn't go into 2. 8 goes into 21 twice. 8 times 2 is 16. So I have 5 left. 8 into 56 is 7. So it is, it does work. 8 divides into 216. So the whole thing works. All right. To divide by 9, we have to add the sum of the digits. If they're divisible by 9, then great. Um, let's see, so if I have, what's for example, 4,302, well, 4 plus 3 plus 2 is 7, 8, 9, that's 9 is divisible by 9, therefore that whole number is divisible by 9, check. For 10, the number's got to end in 0, that one you probably know. 11 is a strange one, so the sum of the digits in the even places, even powers of 10, minus, nope, the odd powers of 10 is divisible by 11. Those are backwards. Hmm. This should be odd. <laughs> Sorry, that should be even. They're different. Okay, so let's pick a number. Let's pick um, 8,471,986. So we count. This is the first place value, third, fifth, seventh, right? This is 10 to the 1, n to the 3, okay? Or, yeah, first place, n to the 1. No, it's not. I'm going to go. I'm going to cross this all out. Oh, gosh. Odd, odd, odd. First place, third place, yes. Okay. Not powers of 10. All right, I know why this is. Oh, I'm gonna... All right, we're going to back up. We're just going to pretend that whole slide never happened. Hold on, I got myself. Because my notes and my, uh, everybody does this when they teach something. This is a teaching moment. So, the way I think about this in my head isn't bad powers of 10. This is why I always do this with my notes. This is not the first time I've done this. So powers of 10, it's the even powers of 10 minus the odd powers of 10. You think about that by the powers and the place values. So this was right. I just think about it differently in my head. This is my problem. So if we take our number. Okay, what did we have? Um, six, eight, nine. Oops, one, seven, four, eight. Okay, even powers of 10. So this is 10 to the first. This is 10 to the second. This is 10 to the third. 10 to the, f no, it's not. This is why I'm doing it wrong. This is 10 to the zero. This is 10 to the first. This is 10 to the second. This is 10 to the third. This is 10 to the fourth. This is 10 to the fifth. This is 10 to the sixth, right? This is the millions place. So ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, okay? So we're gonna take the things in even powers of 10, right? So, um, even powers of 10, eight, plus seven plus nine plus we're going to use that ones place six minus things in the odd spots 
four minus one, or sorry, plus one plus eight. Okay, so eight plus seven is 15, plus nine is 24, right? Eight and seven is 15, plus nine is 24, plus six is 30, minus eight and four is 12, 13. That gets me 17. Is 17 divisible by 11 is the question. Well, no, definitely not, right? So then this whole number is not divisible by 11. Let's pick one that is. So let's see, I have 550,248, okay? Think about your place values. 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 to the two, 10 to the three, 10 to the four, even powers minus odd. So five plus two plus eight minus zero plus four. Five and two is seven, plus eight is 15, minus four is 11. Is 11 divisible by 11? Yes. So that means this number, 5,000 or 50,248, is also divisible by 11. Okay, I'm not gonna mess you up anymore with the way I think about it because I think about the place values a little differently there. So now we have tests for two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11. And remember, if a number is a multiple of another number, so like if I doubled 50,248, a multiple of this number is also going to be divisible by 11. So if I have double this or triple it or quadruple it, still gonna be divisible because the number here was divisible by 11. All right, so here's one for you to try. Um, 57 billion, 729 million, 364,583 has too many digits for a calculator. You have to decide if it's divisible by 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, or 11. Okay? So notice there's no 7 on that list. So don't do the 7. So take a minute, go through and decide. All right. So let's look at it. Is it divisible by 2? No, because it's not even, right? Is it divisible by 3? Well, you got to add up the digits, right? So 5 plus 7 plus 7 plus 2 plus 9 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 5 plus 8 plus 3. Well, that's 12, 19, 21, 30, 33, 39, 43, 48, uh, 56, 57, 58, 59. So the sum of the digits is 59. Is 59 divisible by 3? Well, let's check. 59. Nine, 3 goes into 5 once with a 2 left over. Is 3 into 29? Nope. So it's also not divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 5? Does it end in a 5 or a 0? No. Okay. What about 6? Well, if it's not divisible by 2 or 3, then it's certainly not divisible by 6. What about 8? For eight, we look at the last three digits. We want to look at 583. Is 583 divisible by eight? Well, I don't know. Or is eight divisible? Yeah. So eight goes into five. Nope. Eight goes into 58 seven times with two left over. Eight doesn't go into 23. Eight doesn't work. Does nine work? Well, does 59 divided by divisible by nine? No, it's not going to work. We know that's not going to work. Is it divisible by 10? Mm, nope, doesn't end in zero. Is it divisible by 11? Well, then we have to try it. So let's find out. So even place, let's see, let's lay out our evens. So this is 10 to the zero, one, two. I want that one, that one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 
So my even places are 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3. Okay. Minus what's left? 7 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 8. Okay, 5 and 7 is 12, plus 9 is 21, plus 6 is 27, plus 5 is 32, plus 3 is 35. Okay, I think, yep. Minus 7 plus 2 is 8, 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 4 is 16, plus 8 is 24, and 35 minus 24 is indeed 11. So after all that, it's divisible by 11. Who knew? The one thing that isn't on this list is a 4. So is it divisible by 4? Let's look. We just look at the last two digits to be divisible by 4. Is 83 divisible by 4? Nope. Okay. All right. So, do 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 the next question is, I want to take this number, 12,506,500 and I don't know what, and I want to make it so it's divisible by 9. And there's going to be a bunch of answers here, okay? So what could I do here? Find if something is divisible by 9. Well, wait, before we do that, you should go try it, right? So go do that. All right. You took a minute, right? You did? You promise? <laughs> okay. So when we're finding if something's divisible by 9, we add up the digits. We want a total that's divisible by 9, right? So 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5. And then I have two more spots. Okay, but let's add what we have so far. 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 8. 5 is 8. Plus 6 is 14 plus five more is 19. I have a total of 19 so far. What's the next number? I need the total to be divisible by nine. So what do I add to that to make it divisible by nine? Well, the next, if I count multiples of nine, I go nine, 18, that's not big enough, 27. I need to get to 27 here. So nine plus eight would make 27, right? So I need to get a total of nine, or sorry, eight, in these two spots. So I have this place and this place. Well, what are the ways I can make eight? What are the digits I could put in? Well, I could put in an eight and a zero, right? Or a zero and an eight. That's one way to do it. I could put in a five and a three or a three and a five. I could put a 2 and a 6, a 6 and a 2. I could put a 1 and a 7, or a 7 and a 1. And I could also put in 4 and 4, right? All right. So those are all the different answers to this. Because I could put in anything into those two digits as long as the total ends up to be 8 to make this whole number divisible by 9. Okay. All right. There is a game in here. We're not going to talk about it. We have one last question. A class from a school visited a neighborhood cannery warehouse because, you know, school field trips always somewhere interesting. The manager told the class that there were 11,380 or 68 cans of juice in the inventory and they were in boxes of six or 24, depending on the size. One of the students went, hmm, you have the wrong number in your inventory. And I'm sure the warehouse manager went, oh, God, why? But is the kid right? And how do you know? Well, I don't know. Think about it for a minute. Take a minute. Work through it. All right. So here's the thing. The number in the box is a 6 or 24. Well, 24 is actually a multiple of 6, right? We can go 6, 12, 18, 24. So what I really care about here is the 6. Because if this number is divisible by 6, then he's right. Then the inventory manager is right. But if it's not, I don't know. We'll have to see. So to divide, 
to take my number and divide it by six, I have to know if it's divisible by two or by three. It has to be both for six to work. So is it divisible by two? Well, yeah, it's even, right? So good. Is it divisible by three? How do we do that? We add up the sum of the digits, and if that sum is divisible by three, the whole thing is. Well, one plus one plus three plus six plus eight. One plus one is two, plus three is five, plus six, is 11 plus 8 is 19. Well, 19 is definitely not divisible by 3, which means that that whole thing can't be divisible by 6. And if it's not divisible by 6, it can't be divisible by a multiple of 26 or 24, a multiple of 6 either. So it's also not divisible by 24. So who's right, the manager or the kid? The kid. All right. So this is the end of 4.1. Okay, um, pardon my absolute brain meltdown over divisibility by 11. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, work through the sections and the homework and the things that come with each section, and we'll go from there. I'll see you guys in the next one.